Good morning, children. I am very happy to meet you all back in the biology class. Wisdom comes with the ability to be still. Just look and just listen. No more is needed. Being still, looking and listening activates a non-conceptual intelligence within you. Let stillness direct your words and actions. What does Bible talk about wisdom? If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. So if we lack in wisdom, if you need wisdom, if you ask God for it, he will shower you with wisdom. With that note, let's go into today's lesson. As we're doing the revision, we're going to move to biozoology today. In biozoology, we started with the topic. First, the living world, the need for classification, the taxonomy and systematics, three domains of life, taxonomical hierarchy and nomenclature, and the two study taxonomy. We're going to see few topics what we discussed in the previous class. <clears throat> First, diversity of living world. We have discussed about earth, the earth as numerous habitat. What is habitat? The place we live in with wide range of living organisms. Plants and animals present from different habitat, from polar ice capes to volcanic hot springs, from the <coughs> Mediterranean range till the deep wood forest, the valley, the grassland, the shallow lagoons to deep oceans. A.G. Tansley, he said ecosystem is a community of biotic and abiotic factor and the interrelationship. Ecosystem is nothing but the relationship between the biotic factors, animals, plants and microbes with abiotic factors like water, wind, temperature, soil, etc. <clears throat> what is biodiversity? Presence of large number of species in a particular ecosystem and it was defined by Walter Rosen and E.D. Wilson. Let's learn about taxonomy. What is taxonomy? It's nothing but arrangement of organisms. All the living organisms can be arranged here. The taxonomy is nothing but classification, description and identification of organisms. And taxonomy also includes naming the organism of that nothing but flora and fauna. <coughs> taxonomy, the term was coined by August Penemis in the year 1813. Previously, the scientist Aristotle discovered many things and he started adding the organisms. So he was known as father of taxonomy. Later, the follower Carlos Linnaeus was called mo modern taxonomy because father of modern taxonomy because he followed Aristotle's principle and he classified the plants according to their structure and function. The next topic is systematics. What is systematics? Under systematics, all the organisms were identified and it was described naming, arrangement of organisms, then preserve the organism for the future study, documenting it. <coughs> and here, the environmental adaptation and interrelationship between the species can be studied. By doing the systematics, the, you can learn about the environmental adaptations of the organism and their relationship can be studied here. <coughs> Next, three domains of life. So the major three domains of life are arachia, bacteria and eukarya. Apart from this, remember we have learnt about uh, two kingdom theory, three kingdom, three kingdom theory, four kingdom theory, five kingdom theory and seven kingdom theory. Okay. Now, uh, three domains of life, it was discovered or defined by the scientist called Carl Woese in the year 1977. <coughs> by using this, under this, the organisms were classified mainly based on RNA, that is 16S RNA genes. So the features of these domains, the domain archaea, they survive in very high temperature, they are prokaryotes. Next, the group, the domain bacteria also come under eukaryotes. 
uh, prokaryotes absence of true nucleus and you have discussed about bacteria remember yeah some very or most of the bacteria are heterotrophs very few bacteria are autotrophs a eukarya all the organism possess true nucleus they come under eukarya they may be either autotrophs or heterotrophs nomenclature what is nomenclature naming the organism the organism is named with two words one of the first is called generic name which always start the capital letter followed by the specific name the name can be binomial trinomial or tautonomy what is binomial the organism's name which has two words two names trinomial three names three names can be one one generic name two specific name <clears throat> and finally tautonomy the names are repeated it's called tautonomy what are the rules for nomenclature the scientific names be italicized or underlined the generic name in capital and specific name in the small letter a scientific name should not be similar the scientist name can be after the name of the organism for example felis leo Lin Lin is a person who discovered this organism, and you can also add the date, the year, seventeen fifty-eight. It can also end with I I I, like a Crytodactylus vardagiri. Vardagiri is nothing but name of scientist who discovered the discovered the organism called Crytodactylus. So it was it's known as Crytodactylus vardagiri. Next. Tools to study taxonomy. So, what are tools can we study, use to study the taxonomy? So, what is taxonomy? Classification of organism for a study. Some of the tools are first one is classical tools, classical taxonomic tools. They are taxonomical keys, museum where you can study more about the live animals, zoological parks, marine parks, and some of the printed tools also used to study about the taxonomy of organism. The next one is called molecular taxonomical tools. DNA barcoding, DNA hybridization, and DNA fingerprinting. Now these three are used to study about the uh, molecules present in the tax in the organism. Remember, fingerprint is fingerprinting. DNA fingerprinting is used to start, find out the <coughs> DNA of the person. The next one is automated species identification tools. Some of the tools are Alice, Daisy, Apis, Spider, and Drawing. Now these tools are used to study about the organisms. For example, with drawing, by using this tool draw drawing, we can use, study about the wings of bees. Next, let's move to the kingdom Animalia. So we're going to learn about all the animals come under kingdom animalia. So what are the features of kingdom animalia? These are most of them are multicellular organisms. They are eukaryotic, possess true nucleus. Heterotrophic, they depend upon other organism for their food. Under the kingdom animalia, there are thirty-five phyla. With that, eleven major phyla are there. We're going to learn about eleven major phyla. And this kingdom animalia classified into two major categories: invertebrates and vertebrates. The organism has vertebral column. It is known as invertebrates. If absence of vertebral column, these organisms are known as invertebrates. <clears throat> so, what we are going to start in the kingdom animalia? We are going to start with the first topic: How are the cells are arranged? How the animals are organized? Basic classification of organism. How are the animals are classified? First one, it is classified based on the arrangement of cell layer, levels of organization, nature of coelom, presence and absence of segmentation, and note and notochord. So, what are the levels of organization? First, the organisms are arranged based on the Number of cells, protozoa always they have single cell. Metazoans they have multicellular organisms. So the different patterns of cellular organizations are present here. Sometimes they are only cells, sometimes tissue, sometimes organ, sometimes organ system. So 
if the organism has only cell which are loosely packed <coughs> they are called cell cellular level organization suppose a group of cells which has same structure perform same function they these organism form into tissue level organization sometimes group of tissue perform same function okay they form into organ level organization finally group of organs are collectively known as organ system where they perform a same function for example in our body circulatory system it's one of the organ system now under circulatory system the organs involved are the heart the blood and the blood vessels second category is based on the layers embryonic layers diploblastic or triploblastic what is di di means two so what is the meaning of diploblastic the cells with two embryonic layers ectoderm outer ectoderm and the middle uh, inner endoderm and sometimes in the middle they may not have middle layer but they have cells which is called mesoglia which are which is loosely arranged the second type is called triploblastic outer ectoderm in the endoderm in the endoderm and middle mesoderm cells with three germinal layers which shows the organ system also the third category we are going to classify the organs based on the patterns of symmetry what is symmetry an imaginary line drawn on the organism <clears throat> if you are able to divide the organism into two equal halves in only one plane it is known as bilateral symmetry wherever you draw an imaginary line if you are able to uh, divide the organism two equal halves that organism is known as radially symmetrical <clears throat> but sometime wherever you draw the imaginary line if you are unable to get two equal halves that condition is called asymmetrical okay here with the help of symmetry we are able will be able to see the arrangement of body the parts lie on the opposite side of the axis okay and the body plane result in patterns of development when you draw the line both side you can compare the arrangement of body parts and patterns of development as i told you asymmetrical radial symmetrical bilateral symmetrical common symmetry found in the organism the next one is coelom coelom means cavity okay so presence of body cavity and this cavity lie between the body cavity and the elementary canal and this coelom is lined bordered by the mesodermal cell based on the coelom organisms are classified three category a coelomate organism app shows did not show any coelom they are called a coelomate if the organism show false coelom means of middle layer they have mesoglia they are known as pseudo coelomate the organism with ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm they show true coelom they are called u coelomate notochord <clears throat> so you can classify organism based on the presence of notochord so the animals possess notochord they are known as chordates mesodermally they are derived this notochord is ro rod shaped present on the dorsal side during the embryonic development based on the presence of notochord the chordates are classified into cephalochordate urochordate from feces to mammal now based on the absence of notochord the organisms are classified in, uh, called as non chordates from poriferans to hemichordata mostly the invertebrates come under here let's learn some of the classification now classification of animal kingdom the sub kingdom radiata bilatera the division protostomia and eutostomia and some of the phyla come under invertebrates poriferans the organism which have pores on the body okay then number 2 is cnidarians tenophores phylum tenophora the organism which has coelom on the body phylum platyhelminthes organism which has flat body come under platyhelminthes askelminthes the round worms annelida the organism which has rings on their body annelids on the body arthropoda phylum arthropoda the organism which possesses jointed legs mollusca the animals which has soft body have soft body the phylum echinodermata 
the organism which possess <coughs> very sharp spines on the skin on the derm now all these phylum come under phyla uh, phylum invertebrata let's learn some sub uh, sub kingdoms parazoa they are multicellular sponges but here the cells are very loose uh, loosely arranged without forming the tissue or organ you metazoans they are multicellular animals with well defined tissues all the cells form into tissues organized into organs and even the organ system it includes taxonomic levels grades and it also includes a group called radiata and bilatera so what is bilatera and radiata now they are classified into protostomia and deutostomia the two divisions are protostomia and deutostomia now the protostomia includes eumetazoans and they produce a structure called blastopore what is blastopore a mouth like structure when the young ones developing in the embryo now this blastopore develop into a mouth and it also includes acelomate pseudocelomate and the schizocelomate now what about the deutostomia now deutostomia also includes eumetazoans the anus form away from the blastopore and uh, anus form close to blastopore mouth form away from the blastopore it includes entocelomate from uh, they also form space or a cavity called archentron let's learn about phylum porifera we are going to learn very few phylum uh, phyla here because already we have discussed about nine phyla in the regular class i am going to revise only two phyla here the phylum porifera they are pore bearers the sponges they are aquatic they live in marine bodies asymmetrical with very few live in the fresh water they are very old primitive organism they are multicellular they society they live in one place with cellular level organization they are either radially or asymmetrical they have a canal stem the body through which the water can rush in the water rushes through the structure called ostea fill in spongocele and comes out through the structure called osculum they have a special structure called quanocytes now this quanocytes are the flagellated flagellated cells line on the spongocele and the canal they have structure called spicules sharp structures spicules or spongin on the body which form the body skeleton the nutrition is holozoic they just completely swallow the food and they are a digestion is intracellular inside the cell the hermaphrodite both male and female are present structure present the same organism they asexually reproduce by fragmentation break into smaller pieces each piece develops into an organism or gemmule formation and sexually they produce gametes and they produce larva called parenchymula and amphiblastula example for poriferans are cycon spongilla euspongia and you plectilla the other phylum we are going to learn here is interesting phylum the phylum the, it is also called larger phylum what phylum is that yes arthropoda arthro means jointed poda means leg organism the animals which have jointed legs come under phylum arthropoda largest phylum with largest class insecta they are bilaterally symmetrical body is segmented head thorax abdomen and wings they are triploblastic and schizocelomate with organ system level organization they have jointed appendages for locomotion for movement feeding and even for sensation these appendages are useful the body is covered by chitinous exoskeleton there is no endoskeleton outer skeleton with molting molting or egg diases what is molting when the <coughs> egg uh, when the adult lay the egg this egg hatches the young ones comes out the young one do not resemble like the mother okay slowly the young one show a lot of changes during the change the young one started shedding the skin okay the outer layer the exoskeleton this shedding of skin is called molting or egg diases presence of hemocele with respiratory organs like gills book gills book lungs and trachea they have open circulatory system with sense organs called statocysts statocyst 
how do they excrete through malpighian tubules green glands and coxal glands they are dioecious males and female are separate they egg laying oviparous uh internal fertilization with direct or indirect development example example limulus aphis uh, anophila all the butterfly mosquito crab prawn everything come under this phylum arthropoda okay let's go to the last category we're going to learn the last topic euro chord all the chordates okay apart from this uh, uh phyla which do not have vertebral column uh, the phylum which has vertebral column are called vertebrate they are also called chordata okay we're going to discuss about two phylum phylum eurochordata phylum chordata under chordata we are going to learn the various classes uh classes like uh, chondrichthys osteichthys amphibia reptilia aves and mammalia let's start phylum hemichordata it has open circulatory system with dorsal heart the respiration through paired gills gill slits and which uh, the respiration the gas can pass through into pharynx too the excretion through proboscis gland sex are separate with external fertilization fusion of male and female gametes outside the body and they develop into larva called tornaria larva example balanoglossus sarcoglossus uh Ty, uh, tychodera flavor okay the other phylum is chordata okay it's the largest phylum with fishes amphibians reptiles birds and mammals it possesses less even it possesses less known forms like lancet the amphioxus and ascidians too the presence of elongated notochord <coughs> and below the nerve cord about the alimentary canal so what are the main features of this chordata three structures remember i explained the class number 1 presence of notochord presence of nerve cord and presence of pharyngeal gill slits now these are the three major structure you can find in the chordata what are sub phylum of chordata eurochordata or tunicata cephalochordata and vertebrata let's learn about vertebrates okay Now these vertebrates are classified in two categories. One is Agnatha, other one is Nathostomata. Agnatha is organism, group of organism do not have jaw. They are jawless fish. Nathostomata shows all the features. Let's learn about Agnatha first. It includes jawless fish like vertebrates without paired appendages, and the notochord persists in the adult. It includes like cyclostomata. I'll show the picture of cyclostomata. Now, nathostomata includes jawed vertebrates with paired appendages. Notochord is partially or completely replaced by the vertebral column. It includes jawed fish from cartilage to bony fishes and the tetrapods, the organism with four legs, four limbs. Ah, uh, the agnatha class uh, has a class called cyclostomata. Remember, I just spoke about jawless fish. Now, these are the organism. now they are primitive they are poikilotherms the body the organism can change the body temperature according to the environment also called cold blooded animals they are jawless aquatic vertebrates and they are endoparasite they live inside the organism the body is slender uh, they possess gill slits they are circular mouth they have two chambered heart and they also have closed circulation the cartilage the cartilage cranium the cranium is cartilage and they have vertebral column they are marine organism they migrate into fresh water for spawning and once they uh, produce the egg they hatch the egg the young one develops they become adult and they come back to the marine uh, ocean example petromyzon and myxin another interesting class now we're going to discuss about class amphibia it amphibia are the first vertebrates with tetrapods they are poikilotherms they live both in aquatic and terrestrial the body is divided into head trunk and the limbs the skin is either smooth or rough because uh, they have special gland which keep the skin moist their presence of eyelids 
and tympanum the ear represent tym the tympanum represent the ear and the respiration through gills when they were tadpoles they respire through gills when they become adult when they are inside the water the frog respire through the skin when they are on the land they respire through lungs and even the buccal cavity is also useful for respiration the excretion through mesonephric kidneys the sexes are separate they are oviparous they lay eggs okay the transparent uh, non cladoic eggs and the indirect development with the external fertilization they show hibernation and aestivation what is hibernation winter sleep and aestivation summer sleep actually they don't sleep they rest during the high temperatures extreme temperature whether it's a high or low temperature they undergo rest example all the frogs toads and salamander rana bufo salamander come under the file uh, class amphibia children that's all from today's class i've completed the revision for the exam i would like you to go through the lessons completely uh, botany lesson 1 and biozoology lesson 1 and 2 revise it thoroughly for the examination that's all from today's class all the very best for examination have a good day